background to this is very simple. I was starting to rewrite the test suite chapter in the fourth standard used the Jerry Jackson test suite. And as part of that introduction to it, he claims that um, the minimum requirements required to run the test suite is, and he's got a list of about 20 items. And that infuriated me because half of them were simply wrong. And I have, in fact, used the, um, not the Jerry Jackson, but the John Hayes test suite to bring up two fourth interpreters my Java fourth and iron fourth systems. And I know I promised um, get old that I would actually write that up. And about 10 years later now, I've finally written up the way I've done that. And this is how I brought up those systems. As a experiment, I wrote the base version in C to effectively be more useful to people. Having said that, it's been over a decade since I've written any C, so it was a bit interesting. So, I've effectively used the John Hayes test suite as the driver to build my um, new, new full system. For that full system, I need some very basic data stack manipulation, a very simple dictionary, a few native definitions, just three standard words are required. I need a native version of the test harness, which is perhaps the most important, the, the most complicated bit of it, a very simple interpret loop, and the ability to read text from a file. Now, most people should be able to do the ability to read text from a file. The rest of it is fairly straightforward. This I managed to do um, against my better judgment in 500 lines of code. Now, the code is attached to the paper. You can have a look at it. It's about 650 lines there because it's got comments in. If you take the comments out, it does come to less than 500. The data stack, I have just push, pop, nip, and pop long. Uh, nip and pop long are required because of the way the um, test harness is built. The dictionary is extremely simple. It returns a, I have a data structure, which I call XT, and that contains a function pointer to point me to the native code for that uh, ex execution token. So I have a word that allows me to add a word, sorry, I have a method, tells you how long it is, uh, add word that allows me to add the fourth word testing to the dictionary. And when you execute the testing word, you actually perform the comment function. I have a method of finding those words, which is really, really basic. It is simply a linked list. So you look through the linked list. Echo. I have found uh, in doing this a couple of times, it's actually quite handy to output to the screen the text you are parsing as you're parsing it. So I've actually added two words, plus echo and minus echo, which turns on the echoing and turns it off again afterwards. So as you're parsing the line, it's what's being read by your parser. Obviously, plus echo is quite slow. So when you're working through it, you just minus echo and keep going until you get to the bit you're interested in. Scanning. This is my basic scanner. So I have... Um, Unfortunately, it seems to have broken that across the page, but never mind. Next chart reads the next character from the input and will automatically load the next line from the file, updates the line number, updates the file position, and all sorts of silliness like that. Next word simply reads a word from the input. Um, 
it's what we used to call word so ignore leading blank white space and read up to the next white space parse number parse number is a little bit more interesting because this does actually pay attention to unfortunately i've called it um did i call it base or radix I can't remember what I called the variable, but um, it's either base or radix because the vast majority, in fact, all of the John Hayes test suite is written in hex. The three fourth words you need to process the John Hayes test suite is the hex word to set it into hexadecimal mode. It's the first word in the test suite. Um, end of line comment and inline comment everything else is part of the test suite as far as i'm concerned the test suite this is the hayes test suite starts with brace execute so brace simply sets the stack depth to zero execute makes a copy of the stack in a another array in this instance and close brace compares this is the complicated one because it compares the current stack against the save stack and tells you if you've got a problem testing is ignore the rest of line so it's the end of line comment now in john hayes's code he actually has a variable called verbose i think it's called which outputs the rest of the testing line or not. And I've replaced that with plus echo, so I don't need that for those. Now, because we're starting from nothing, we do need a couple of temporary definitions. And I say they're temporary because they are very basic and they're gonna get removed later and replaced with actual definitions. So we actually need colon believe it or not sorry no we don't we need bit set and bits which the test suite defines fairly early on in his test suite um so we need to provide native versions of these and comment these out in the Hayes code we also have to define a slew of constants now, fortunately, most languages have these constants defined somewhere. So zeros, ones, true, false, most significant bit, etc. Fairly easy to find. The next problem I came across was division. And interestingly, C does not define whether it uses semantic, uh, sorry, uh, symmetrical or uh, flawed division. It's left up to the implementation. So we actually need to manage that within our code. So I've simply defined if flawed and if sim to ignore the rest of the line, but then I have to define my own version, my own native code implementations of t divide mod, uh, t mod, sorry, t mod, t dev, t times dev mod and t times dev most of those are fairly simple but really we only need to implement um t times sorry t divide mod and t times divide mod the rest of them are just calls that takes us on to the interpret loop now this is the outer interpreter so we're all happy using word and execute to perform these well, it's effectively what i've got here so i get a name from word if it's not null if it is null it's the end of the file so if it's not null i find it in the dictionary if i do not find it in the dictionary then throw out and say we've got an error we haven't got that far through the system if i find it perform it pass it to execute um uh, not quite if i don't find it i have to try and parse it as a uh, value don't i, I have to parse, parse it as a a literal number and if it doesn't pass as a literal number then we say we can't find it 
there's no indication of compile mode there's no interpret mode there's no specials in here at all it's a very very basic system having got that far we can now start processing the john hayes test suite and okay we need to comment out a couple of bits in that test we to start with but we can do the basic assumptions the booleans the shifts comparisons the stack operators and until we get to well actually here so we get to section 10 of the Hayes test suite and at this point we actually have tested the system enough to be able to write a simple colon and constant and a simple colon unfortunately so once we've defined constant we can get rid of our native version constants because the system's capable of defining a constant now uh, now we've got colon we should be able to undefine or uncomment if flawed and if sim and let them run unfortunately we can't uncomment bit set and bits yet because they need to deal with the return stack they need to do loops and things so we're not yet in position to, to uncomment those two but that means we can now do memory characters dictionary the return stack and flow control once we've got to flow control we can now uncomment bit set bits and remove our native definitions and that now allows me to run through the rest of the Hayes test stack test suite complete now I here rather than showing you there here is the, the code very very simplistic um, perhaps the most difficult bit the second most difficult bit is the error handler and that's simply so it displays a sensible error message uh, rm directory removes the directory depending on whether it's in the linux um, windows form or posix form incredibly basic stack if i were doing this if I were going to take this on and build a fourth system from this, the first thing I would do is take each of these blocks and convert that into a module. And I would have a completely rewrite the way the stack works uh, because I'll take a base stack pointer and work off that data structure. Um, the dictionary is so incredibly simple. That would obviously need to be beefed up. So it's a linked list of names and functions. I have a method called find. So if I effectively have word and find and execute. So this is my next character. So read a character from the input stream. Read a word from the input stream parse a number using ah uh, it's called base so assuming base is 16 that will interpret a hexadecimal number comment simply ignore the rest of the line pawn is ignore everything up to the next close pawn now i initialize the hex words i now define my test case so my start test tests um, execute point is simply copy the data stack to the a, a buffer and reset the data stack so in here test end i simply match those two buffers the existing the saved one against the existing one and spit out an error message if necessary so now we get on to the test cases. So this, this is the native version of bit test of bits. Here are my native versions of the constants. Um, times divide mod. 
So here you see I pop long and here I've got nip to implement, well, swap drop is nip really, so. And so now I load up my dictionary with the fourth word, the fourth name and the C function associated with that name. And away we go. We can now start to process the John Hayes suite and it will error every time it finds a word it can't handle. You then go away and implement that word. And if you implement it incorrectly, it will tell you you've got it wrong. And in two at such time as you get it right, it will start then trip you up on the next word. The only part of this, which is not quite as simple as it sounds, is the fact that I had to move the um, return stack testing. It is in part nine, I think of the Hayes test suite and in order to win, sorry, part six of the Hayes test suite. And I had to move that until after I've done the dictionary. Um, but otherwise, knock your, spokes, knock your boots off. That's it. I'm trying to catch up from lunch. So uh, questions. Thank you very much, Peter. Are there any questions on Twitch? Please type them in the chat. Are there any questions here in Big Blue Button? Please raise your hands. I saw Howard first. Please, Howard, go away. Oh, yeah. Hi, Peter. Not so much a question as more a comment. This looks great. I love it. I love it because it, it reminds me of um, a typical fourth development process where you, you don't really know what you're doing when you start, but you have a test word that tells you that you're not doing it so you can fix it so it, it really rings a bell with me that's how i work it's a time. very very simple way of working yeah and it's and very powerful yeah. it took me ooh, maybe six hours to write the base c code yeah yeah um but there again i have done it before i, I have already written a java version and a c-sharp version of all this and obviously those are all all object orientated and all modularized and all that sort of silliness. And because I wanted this to be very simple, I really, really had to struggle quite hard to keep it all in one C file. But I, I have done that because it was so much against my nature. I, I, I always like to have single files. Uh, I end up with huge files, but, but with a text editor, you can search what you want and you, you know which file it's in. It's always in the same file. So. I quite like that. Is is this code? Is the C code available? Uh, yes, it's on the website. Um, it's I, it is it is on my website. Um, there is a link to it in in the paper. Right. Okay. Great. Thanks. All right. Uh, Anton has a question. Anton, please go ahead. Yes, uh, one comment. Um, C uh, used to not uh, totally standardize uh, division, but uh, since C99, they have standardized on symmetric division. Um, I admit every C system I've experimented with all do symmetric division. But... Yeah. So they apparently also recognize that and they standardized on that, which is interesting because they still have not standardized on two's complement. But <laughs> oh, well, well it, it's even worse than that because I think the documentation actually says that they haven't, the documentation doesn't mention synchronized or flawed division. Yet every system I've looked at uses uh, synchronous. No, it, they actually, they actually, uh, I, I've seen it. So if you read the C99 standard, it's it's uh, symmetric there. Fair yeah. enough. Okay. Uh, I also have to say uh, I was glad enough to be able to test this. Uh, Peter has sent me the sources before. Well, it was very cool I, to run. I did that and, very much because it's been a decade since I've written any C. Yeah, but still, uh, I thought it was fun to work with it. And I can only recommend uh, the way what Peter does is to 
produce these stubs, just put them in the code because then other people can use it. Yes, the result may be stupid, but it will be the correct type. So for example, if you just have a, a, a string concatenator, you can just do two drop, two drop, zero, zero. It's not making any sense, but it will not break any further programs and you can go ahead. That's really cool. Uh, are there any further questions for Peter? Philip, please go ahead. Yeah, also just a comment, um, uh, praising the approach. I took the very same approach in uh, porting Volksforth to the Commander X X16 earlier this year or late last year, and it worked just as brilliant. Um, you just uh, run until you bump into the into the next blocker, and by and by you you work your way through. So. I mean, it, it's a very fourth approach because you run until you get a problem, you fix the problem, you run it again. A lot of developers I, don't like that approach because it means you've got to stop. You stop early and start again, but that's the fourth way of working. Yep. Actually, actually I've 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 learned to to uh, appreciate that way in the well in the Java or in the C um, uh, ecosystem, where with uh, JUnit or uh, um, Gtest, uh, you have a very very similar uh, tool set, and I really like the. The saying from I think it was from Kent Beck. Uh, rarely have so few lines of code helped so many, or something like that. Uh, adapting the, the famous Churchill quote. So. Oh, um, well, I use NUnit for work, and it, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, um, and and uh, that's also something that I that I really like to have the tests hard encoded and easy to, easy to rerun as a. Um, second uh, approach to the um, usual fourth interactive testing so... well here because we've got the john hayes test suite and yes the hayes test suite has now been incorporated into the jerry jackson test suite although he uses the t brace notation um it makes it so much easier i just literally just downloaded the test suite off of uh, tegata and away you go precisely 